Hey everyone, this is Mr. Willis. This will be a pretty lengthy tutorial on different aspects of Google, um, all the way from logging in with the Chromebook. And what you'll see is I've kind of got some different things set up behind me here <laughs> for um, some different areas that I'll be recording in. Um, you'll see a multitude of different kinds of recordings. You'll see some screen recordings. Um, I have some guest appearances from a few teachers as well as um, some cell phone coverage that you'll see that we are using um, just to show some different ways um, to try to make this distance learning the best experience that we possibly can. Um, I just want you to know off the bat that I am with you in this. I am learning right along with you guys on some of the different pieces that we'll be doing. Um, it's going to be an ongoing learning process for everyone, not just in our building, but across our nation right now. Um, so I will ask <laughs> um, for some patience. Um, I will do my best to help as many people as I can throughout the daytime um, with any kind of technical problems. You'll see a few different links pop up uh, with some email addresses for specific kinds of questions. If it's a tech thing, send it to this. If it's a, I need my password reset kind of thing. Um, we'll kind of go over that in some different detail. But first, um, let's kick this thing off. Ms. Tonis actually has a message for you guys. And so take it away, Ms. Tonis. Hey parents, I am Mrs. Tonis. I teach seventh and eighth grade English. And on behalf of all of the teachers, we wanted to put together a little video to help you kind of navigate this new challenge that we've all found ourselves in. So we uh, put some materials and some training together for you to help you through this process of navigating the new world of virtual learning. Um, I hope that you will find this resource helpful and we want you to know that we absolutely have your back and we will be with you every step of the way through this process. If at any point you need help or assistance from your child's teacher, please be sure to reach out and let us know. We've got this, we'll do it together. Let's kind of go into some basics. So I've kind of got like some ideas of some things to kind of show from the start. Um, you're our first time Maverick with this. Um, welcome to Liberty Tech. This place is pretty magical. Um, just a quick intro. I was from the corporate world um, and I left the corporate world to come back into education um, just because of the things that were going on here that I got to see through my wife's class. Uh, she teaches second grade here, Miss Willis. Um, there's just so much that happens in this building that they just don't happen in other places in other public schools. Um, so there's just so much that will be an enrichment that happens here. Our exhibition nights, um, those are magical. I promise you they are fantastic. Uh, we have a whole bunch of content out there from some previous, if you want to kind of uh, previous exhibition nights, if you want to check that out, just to kind of see what's going on. If you're one of our first time families, for our returning families, welcome back. I'm excited to see you guys. Um, this is um, this is my classroom. As you can tell, it's a little different. Um, I keep saying, um, and it's just one of those things. Uh, so uh, let's get this thing kicked off. My first little tidbit that we're gonna go into is you've just gotten home and let's kind of see how to log into a Chromebook and what you'll see from the student perspective. So I'm gonna kick it over to a, a different video that shows an over the shoulder view so you actually can see um, on a Chromebook what you'll actually be experiencing. So sit tight, I'll be right back. All right, so let's look at opening your Chromebook for the first time, okay? On to the side, you'll see you have, this is where your power adapter will go, okay? Um, on our student Chromebooks, we've dis, uh, we've deactivated the SD card, so you won't be able to put into an SD card to pull in any information if it's a uh, student device. On the opposite side, you'll see there's an HDMI cord. If you want to connect over to put in an external monitor, you can. There's two USB ports. If you would like to put in he uh, microphone or headphones that are enabled by USB, or if you have um, an external keyboard that'll work here and here's your headphone jack okay whenever you plug your power source in depending on which brand 
of our H of our Chromebooks you're getting, the power adapter may be on the left side or the right side, okay? You'll open your Chromebook up. I always teach the two-hand touch. I'm gonna take my two hands. I'm always gonna have two hands of contact on my Chromebook whenever I'm moving it. If I'm holding it, I'm always gonna have a nice firm grip so it doesn't fall. Okay, I'm gonna be on a flat surface. Now I open up my Chromebook. When you open it up, depending on if it's a newer, newer model of a Chromebook, um, the screen resolution might be a little different than what you're seeing here, okay? My Chromebook's a little dirty, I need to clean it. Um, you can use a standard uh, wipe, uh, like a Clorox wipe, just make sure that it's not super saturated and wet. Uh, when you're at your home, the networks will pop up and you'll be able to type in your password for your overall internet connected into it. Now, what you'll see <clears throat> with it being a Chrome product, there's only one way to get into your Chromebook, and that will be to log in using your Liberty Tech account. As soon as this gets up to it, uh, for our new families, especially for our kindergarten families, your um, the structure to logging in is typically last name, period, first name, and then you'll see they're at and then there's the rest of it being at libertytechcharter.org, okay? You'll see where it says right here where it says sign into your Chromebook. The first thing that you'll see right here is where it says enter your email. Like I said, it's last name, period, first name. So I've created an account with my daughter's name, W-I-L-L-I-S dot Addison, A-D-Y-S-O-N. So that's my daughter. We have it here. I don't have to type in my at libertytechcharter.org. That fills in for me. And I'm going to use my mouse pad. My mouse pad on my Chromebook's down here at the bottom. Okay. Use my mouse pad. Scroll over and click next. From here, you'll need to enter, enter your password. If you are a new Maverick, um, kindergarten and first grade, your teacher will be sending your password to you. Now, I am also going to set um, some instructions home that will go through how to change the password if you would like to have a more secure password at home. It totally is up to you. Um, so that's kindergarten, first grade. Second grade, be in communication with your homeroom teacher about passwords. And third grade up, you guys have created your own passwords prior to um, the school year. If you have forgotten please email me right here, put my email up, Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R, period, Willis, W-I-L-L-I-S, at libertytechcharter.org, and I will be able to reset your password. Okay, so I'm going to put in my daughter's password. Okay, first time that you're logging in, you're basically getting a welcome sign that says, welcome to your account. This is all inside the institution of libertytechcharter.org. You're giving permissions to the terms of service, basically saying that you're not trying to go in, hack in, break in, steal in, however, of the things that Google provides. And then you just click accept. Welcome to your home screen. As you'll see the first time that you log in, your Chromebook is nothing more than a portal to get you into the Google products. You can't download any programs to uh, your Chromebook. You can get different extensions. If you talk with either myself or our IT department, um, there are certain extensions that can be put onto your Chromebooks uh, from a student side. Uh, from a staff side, we can do a little bit more, but on the student side of things, you won't be able to download anything without permissions, okay? So that's your first round of basics on getting into your Chromebook. I'm back. So you'll notice that I'm actually recording through uh, Google Meet. This is the way that a lot of our live lessons will be taking place. Um, your synchronous lessons will be this way. Um, you'll notice a different view depending on how we're gonna be looking at things. So this, we always got the bell. It'll even pop in during our videos. You're not missing much, I promise. You'll still hear the bell during those live lessons. 
anyways, so we go into a little bit of what you'll see on a Google Meet uh, during classes, during your live lessons, during your asynchronous or your recorded lessons. It'll look a little different. Um, you won't see any of the like the chat participants since it's a, a recorded lesson, kind of like this. Uh, the biggest benefit that you'll have to making sure that you're understanding what your student is seeing is to understand how you can kind of help. So what I'm going to show next is how a student can easily navigate through the different Google apps, going into Google Classroom, how to add a code. Um, so let's kind of check out some of that content now. See you in a second. Welcome back. Our next round is we're going to get inside of the Google Suites, okay? From my Chromebook, we just saw how to log in. So now I'm going to use my cursor, see my mouse? I'm gonna click down here on, I call it the colorful circle. This is Google Chrome. I'm gonna click on Chrome. And this is gonna load in to Google's website. I apologize for the waviness. That's just what happens whenever you record a screen, okay? Now, for the first time, if this is a kindergarten, first grade, or if you're a first time uh, Maverick with us, welcome. You'll be able to have your home screen set however you want in terms of adding a background if you wanna customize it, but it's always going to default to come into google.com. And there's reason behind that is because I would like for those first few times that you log in to be able to see getting to Google, uh, Gmail, your avatar, or your different security options here, okay? And this is for your account. Now, let's look at getting into Google Classroom, okay? You'll click on, we call it the waffle. So you'll click right here where it's the nine dots, aka the waffle. You'll see all the different, um, we call it, these are apps. So we have the account itself. This is an A because it's for Addison. Um, depending on your child's name, you'll see their first initial. Uh, Gmail, Drive, Classroom, uh, Docs, which is like a Word, Microsoft Processing, uh, Sheets is kind of like Excel, Slides, you have Calendar, the Chat function, which is one-to-one -one communication between teacher to student. Um, Google Meet is where our teachers will be hosting those live and those asynchronous or recorded lessons. Okay. You'll have the different um, pieces down here, Jamboard. We'll kind of get into that later. Um, this, this Google Apps through the waffle is how you can kind of navigate through the uh, Google products quickly. So let's kind of look inside of joining a Google Classroom. I've clicked on the Classroom app. Okay, This is my first time joining in. So notice it says Addison Willis. I'm gonna click on continue. And I'm choosing that I am a student. Okay. From here, all you're going to need to do is click the plus sign and enter in whatever class code your homeroom teacher has sent to you via email. From there, you'll be able to join into their Google Classrooms and quickly be able to navigate through the content that your teachers have provided. This is where you'll also need to check in every day to find the new Meet link. And in just a moment, I'm gonna get into some of the uh, different ways that you can have communication with your teacher. So stay tuned. Let's take a quick look at one of our teachers that sent out a quick video that included their Google Classroom code to show how to join um, a Google Classroom. So, enjoy. Good morning. This is just a quick video to show you how to join our Google Classroom for second grade. First, click on the waffle when you go to Google. Then click on the Google Classroom app. Once you are in Google Classroom, click the plus sign to join in the top right corner. After that, look on the chalkboard for our class code. Type that into the box and click join. When you are done, look around for some activities in our Google Classroom. So the next thing I wanna talk about is your student's Google Gmail, okay? Your Gmail app. 
it is imperative that you're helping your student understand how to check their Gmail. All you'll do is you'll click the waffle. Actually, let me show you. So my screen is currently in the process of sharing. What you'll actually see from here is whenever you come into your google.com, in the top right, you'll see your student avatar. And from there, next to that, it's a, it's a term that we've kind of coined around here, the waffle, okay? You're gonna click the waffle, and depending on if your student has rearranged the icons, it's really simple. If you just tap and drag, you'll actually be able to rearrange the icons. I'll show you that now. So if I tap and I can drag it around, sorry, I'm on my interactive panel. Let me grab my mouse. So if I tap and drag, it can kind of move around. So now our, our interactive panels, you'll see some teachers using them differently. You'll have the differences between the tap feature because our interactive panels are touch screen or you'll have some that'll use a wireless mouse to be able to click around. So sometimes you'll see the cursor pop up on screen, kind of like what we're seeing now. <clears throat> if you simply click the waffle and then choose the Gmail app, that'll take you to your students, um, your students' Gmail. Now, let me come back so you can see. <laughs> Got a little inception moment kind of coming down to see everything on my screen. So it's imperative that you're helping your student understand Gmail. Normally in my class, we talk through the Gmail etiquette at the first few weeks of class to kind of walk through how to look at messages, how to respond, that kind of thing. But since we're digital, I won't be able to have that interaction with some of our families here in the first few weeks. Just remember that Gmail communication is like writing a letter. It needs to be a little bit more formal, um, if you can kind of help your student to understand how to do a, um, like a greeting with a dear miss or, uh, for instance, miss period Caldwell comma enter start typing your message. Um, this um, email etiquette would be helpful on the front end if you have to do some kind of email communications between student to teacher. Um, another thing that you'll see is your student will actually get a lot of communication through their Gmail account. Yes, we do send emails to parents, but a lot of communication happens internally inside of Gmail with our staff to students by Google Classroom. A lot of the notifications will come through from Google Classroom directly into your student's email. So if they're able to check their email before they log into their first meeting of the morning of their first class, uh, you'll be able to help them understand their email inbox. So what I'm asking is that um, they kind of get in the routine of log into Chromebook. Let me check my Gmail next. The first thing I always do whenever I get here, um, as you can see, I now have 33 emails that I've got to get through. Um, but as soon as we get here, I open my email, see what's the, the biggest priority, and then move through there. Um, so I'm, I'm teaching myself uh, some um, proper etiquette in terms of responding to questions within our 24 hour manner. Secondly, with our email, what you'll notice is that G our Google Classroom, excuse me, Google Classroom will send parent notifications as long as you're signed up as a guardian. If you have not gotten that invitation from your homeroom teacher, just reach out to them, ask them to put you in to their Google Classroom as a guardian. So the reason why you cannot, as a parent, join the Google Classroom is because Google Classroom is limited to the institution of the school. So that's why your student is able to join through Google Classroom with their at libertytech.org account, okay? There, it's just security purposes, it helps to keep that communication safe between teacher to student. Um, but you can easily ask your student anytime 
to um, log in or do what I would do. Ask them for their password. Um, come up with that kind of agreement together. This is your password. I know your password. There's no secrets. Uh, that needs to be a conversation that you have right here in the very beginning of school. That way that you can see what the student is seeing um, in real time. That way there's no secrets. You know exactly what's going on and just have that conversation. You could even have their email address written down with their password and set it right on their computer. That way that if they're having trouble logging in, there's your login. If you want to come log in and see what's going on, you have that right as a parent. OK, um, so that's Gmail. Our next thing that we're going to kick it over to. So Miss Caldwell has a really, really cool tool that she would like to show you guys. So take it away, Miss Caldwell. Hi, my name is Diana Caldwell, and I'm one of the fourth grade teachers here at Liberty Tech Charter. It is my honor to be able to share with you some ways that you can use your phone to make life a little easier for you and your child when adding assignments to Google Classroom. What I want you to do, uh, or what I recommend, um, is to install five apps on your phone. You can install them in on an Apple phone. You can install them on an Android phone. You can also install them on a tablet, so long as that tablet has a camera. And here are the five I want you to download. I want you to download Google Drive, Google Classroom, Google Calendar, Google Meet, and Google Chrome. Those are five different apps and each one can help you to upload documents and pictures and all kinds of things very, very easily. Um, during this time of virtual learning, we wanna have as much of their faces and their lives and all kinds of really wonderful things so that we can make this as personable as possible for our kids. We miss them and we want to be able to um, make it easy for you uh, and your child to add attachments and pictures and whatnot. So um, let's say, for example, your child has an assignment in Google Classroom. Now, the first thing I want to tell you about Google Classroom is parents often ask, how can I access my child's Google Classroom? And the answer to that is you can't. The only person who can access your child's Google Classroom account is your child. Um, you can sign up to receive summaries of their work, which is what I'll cover in just a few minutes. But if you want to see what's physically on their stream, you have to have your child log into the account first, and then you'll be able to look and see the different kinds of things that they've been assigned to do. So let's say there's an assignment that asks the child to take a picture of something and to upload it into their Google Drive or into that Google Classroom. So there are a few ways you can do this. One way using your phone is to simply take a picture of whatever it is that you want. If you have the Google Drive app already installed on your phone, it's very easy to take the picture that you took, add it to your Google Drive, and then it goes along its happy way. Now, the catch here is in the Google Drive app, your child has to be the one to sign in with their Liberty Tech email address. Now, this does not mean that they have access to any of your things. They can't see anything like your email or your documents. They can't see anything at all. The only thing it allows them to do is um, to have access to their files. And it makes it really easy for you as a parent to just take a picture. I'll show you how to tap the icon, upload it, and it goes right into that child's Google Drive. And then our part as teachers, we're going to be showing your children step by step repeatedly, not just one time, how to take a picture or an item or document from their Google Drive and attach it to Google Classroom. So that's going to be our responsibility on our end. All we want is for you to be able to get the picture into their Google Drive. We can take it from there. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. Um, another useful tool about Google Classroom is when the teachers set assignments up in Google Classroom, almost all of the time we give a due date. We ask that the child be done by a certain amount of time. If you use the Google Calendar app, you can log into the calendar. Again, your child has to be the one to log in. Doesn't mean they can see any of your stuff, but your child has to log in with their Google uh, Liberty Tech Google account. And you can see a list of assignments and when they are due on Google Calendar. So you could just look at the week and see, okay, these assignments will be due 
and it works very nicely um, and you can see them in Google Calendar. You can have more than one account turned on at the same time as well. Um, and so it just, it works. It's very easy for you to just kind of click on the calendar and look and see, okay. Now it doesn't give you the details of the assignment. It just gives you the date and the name of the assignment and when it's, when it's due. So that's how to use um, calendar. Now um, we will be virtually meeting with the children using Google Meet. Google Meet use uh, as an app, you can put it on your phone. Um, it's also built into um, the Google tools that the students use, which they can access from any laptop, Chromebook, tablet. But let's just say something was going on and you couldn't be at home when your child needs to be online. But you could have them listening in the car, maybe while you're driving somewhere. So if you download Google Meet onto your phone, in addition with the Google Classroom on your phone, let's say, you hand the phone to your child, they log into their Google Classroom, they'll see a link for the meeting that day. And when they click that link, it will open up already on your phone. Okay, so you don't have to, after you've installed the Chrome and you've installed the classroom and you've installed the Meet, um, you can take that anywhere with you and your child can participate virtually um, wherever they are. Uh, if that's, you know, of course we want, we want them to be, you know, we, ideally we'd like them to be at home in a, you know, quiet place where there aren't any distractions, but we all know that that's not always possible. Um, the other thing that trying to see what else do I want to tell you. Uh, the other thing that I can talk to you about is receiving guardian summaries for Google Classroom. You will receive an invitation. If you want a guardian summary, then you will receive an invitation from the teacher. Now, some teachers will send this out automatically. Some teachers, um, you might have to ask, hey, I'd like to receive a Google summary and they can send you an invitation. So they will send an invitation for Google summaries to any email address. It doesn't have to be a Gmail account. It can be any email address and um, you have to accept the invitation. Now, a lot of times what we've seen in the past is that these invitations for guardian summaries go to your junk mail right away. So if you don't see it after maybe 24 hours, um, I would say check your junk mail just to see if it's in there. Now, these guardian summaries, you can set up under the preferences um, how many times a week you want to receive a summary. Um, and uh, there's a couple other options there that you can customize to your liking. These Google summaries will not show you the grades, but they will show you what's been assigned. It will also show you if your child is missing an assignment or if it's overdue. And if there are coming assignments, it will show you that as well. So it's really three purposes. Any missing work, it will tell you. Um, current assignments, it will tell you. And coming assignments, if they are listed, it will tell you that as well. So it's a very useful tool. OK, so again, if you want to receive Google summaries, um, some teachers will just send it out automatically. I'm hoping most of us will. If not, you can email the teacher and just say, I'd like to receive a Google summary and they can send you the invitation for that. So I think that's about all that I have to say. Um, I'm so excited uh, to be a part of the team helping our parents support our students. If I can be of any help, again, my name is Diana Caldwell. You can email me diana.caldwell at libertytechcharter.org and I will do my best to answer your question or find someone else who knows how to answer it. Take care. Thank you, Ms. Caldwell. That was fantastic. You have an insanely powerful tool that sits in your pocket most of the day. And as long as you got the right apps, it's a powerful tool to help your student communicate if we're having a little bit of trouble between the Chromebook uh, assignments to be turned in. I'm going to now show you one more really neat app that, uh, sorry, sorry, Android people, I don't know how you do it. Um, I know how we do it in the Apple world, but so you might need to check into just your uh, your own way of doing this. But for my Apple folks, we all have the notes feature. So let me show you a cool little tool that we can use to scan in documents really quickly and send them to teachers if need be.
Okay, let's take a look at how to use the note function on an iPhone. If you're an Android user, I apologize. I do not know how to do this on the Android side of things. So if you do, send me some step-by-step -step instructions and I can help um, get that out to parents that have questions. Now, notice at the bottom, I've got a lot of the notifications. I'm trying to uh, take care of those as they come in. Um, as I'm going through this, I is recording my screen, so some notifications may pop up. I will do my best to uh, exit them out as fast as I can. Um, but just know that I've now I've now tried this four times, and every time it has um, popped up more notifications, and I'm trying to keep those private. Um, anyways, off to the left. Notice in the top, I have my notes function. If you have a newer iPhone, you can actually do the force touch, which is if you press on top of an app, you can actually force it to open up a new set of menu items. So I'm going to do my force touch. Notice how it's popping up. And it says new note, new checklist, new photo, scan document, or some of the edit the home screen or delete apps. Okay. You can, you can click on real fast uh, just to scan a document, or if you need to go in the old-fashioned way, you can come in, click Notes. Now at the bottom right, I'm clicking to start a new, um, composing a new note, okay, on the bottom right. In the middle, you'll see where I have a camera icon. I'm going to take that camera icon, and now I have the option of scanning a document. Whenever I do this, it's going to be it opens your camera. Okay, I'm going to hover over whatever document I need to send in. It's going to scan it in. Okay, if there's multiples, you just keep on you keep on scanning in however many. Okay, it'll scan in. Make sure it's nice and visible, like that last one wasn't so much. So I'm going to come in here and take another picture. Okay. The bottom left, you'll see, or the bottom right, excuse me, you'll see where it says save. It's going to take those three documents. Now I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this parent training. Okay. I'm just going to click on return. That's going to finish this out. Now I'm going to click done. Now on the top right, I can click that export button. And once I click it, it'll pop up some more options for you to either uh, email it, to send it as a text message, or you can drop it in like what Ms. Caldwell was showing. You can put it into the Google Classroom, Google Drive, um, different apps. Um, so that's how you can use your phone to easily become a scanner. Now, let's take a look at what else we have available as far as resources. Hey, I'm back. So the last thing I want to show you guys is that we have put together um, a PDF of some different resources to kind of help through to see how to do certain certain things if there's some problems that come up. Okay, so I'm going to click over to my different tab and kind of walk you through some of the things that are there. <clears throat> You'll have this link inside of um, it'll be on our website. It says bit.ly slash LTCS underscore digital resources. I'll have that out there, it'll be on our website, it'll be on social media. It'll be, I'll get our homeroom teachers to email as well. But this will be a spreadsheet to where you can see how to um, put in some different aspects of uh, questionings that you might be able to kind of work through if you kind of come into those uh, at home digitally that we weren't able to cover here in school prior to the school year starting, okay? Um, the biggest ones being under the Google Classroom, this is the, being a PDF, they're all clickable. And these all link to either um, some uh, kind of resources that you can read through real fast, like a blog, or it'll be to YouTube links. <clears throat> so make sure that you're watching this on a non-Liberty Tech account because we have YouTube block for students. So make sure that you're checking this on your personal device as opposed to um, our Chromebook through your um, student's email because it'll be disabled. The, um, so there's some different ones for parent, uh, parent guide navigation. As you can see right here, I'm going to pull up my mouse. Parent guide navigation, how to kind of navigate through <clears throat> uh, um, Google Classroom. There's also how to 
get your communication. This is what I was talking about, but being a guardian, you can get through there um, as well as how to join the class. We kind of walked through that just a few moments ago and you kind of saw some different videos of how to join a classroom. You also see how to submit and unsubmit and resubmit assignments as well as turning assignments in. These kind of like, these are super fast videos. They're less than five minutes. If you have any kind of questions, <clears throat> there's some more um, right here under the doc, which is Google doc. This is how our students kind of type like research papers, things like that. It's all collaborative. If they share the document with another student, you can have how to add a table, how to add your Google slide to a doc. So if they've created a presentation inside a Google slide, they can actually link it over inside a doc and present the material that way. Super cool, super cool. How to change the overall page color, how to cite properly with using EasyBid and Explore. This is for our middles. They're learning those research and um, MLA formats. That's great. How to put in some Google Draw pieces if they're having to do some stuff for um, a middle electives for art or for my class for digital media or for Steam. We might be using Google Draw. Uh, how to embed those inside of your work. Um, how to organize inside of your Google Drive. Your student can learn how to organize some different assignments as well. <clears throat> now, the, you'll see that there are a few iPad tutorials for Google Drive and Classroom. I do not, let me repeat, I do not recommend using a mobile device such as a tablet or a phone to try to do a lot of the work through Google Classroom, you will find that it will be a nightmare. Those apps are not uh, appropriate in terms of trying to get content accomplished. And you can do a Google Meet through a mobile device as long as you have the address that your teacher has supplied, your homeroom teacher. But I would not suggest trying to do assignments through a mobile device. There's just a, a lot more limitations there than your Chromebook, okay? There's like some how to's here on how to share documents. Um, just kind of some of the basics that we would have covered at school prior to anything like this. But we we just thought that having a go to resource for um, some general questions. If you look through here and you don't find an answer, reach out to the homeroom teacher. Um, if the homeroom teacher cannot answer it, they'll get in contact with me about trying to figure out an easy solution to the problem. So after a few weeks, this will become routine. This will become a lot easier as we kind of navigate the waters together. Um, and just remember at the end of the day, together we are Maverick Strong and together we're gonna be able to overcome this, um, this new normal that we are facing. Um, final thoughts, if you have an IT kind of question, my Chromebook's not working, my X isn't doing this, my this isn't working, um, send those to, right up here you'll see, IT department at libertytechcharter.org. That will get you uh, directly in touch with our IT department. Or you can send an email to technology at libertytechcharter.org. That email goes to the IT department and to me at the same time, and then we'll be able to kind of tag team. If you have like a general question, my child forgot their password, that kind of thing, you can just email me directly right down here, tyler.willis at libertytechcharter.org. And I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. So I hope you found this informative. If you have any other questions, just feel free, email your homeroom teacher first. If they can't help through, they'll get in touch with me and then I'll be in contact or our IT department will be in contact. It's gonna be an awesome year, I'm excited. I can't wait to talk to my middle school students on Monday, first thing, 8 a.m. Uh, it's gonna be a great start to our year. And yes, that is a GI Joe lunchbox from the 80s. I'm excited about using that this year. Have a fantastic day. Together we are Maverick Strong.